Hey guys, my name is Rick with High Tech Battery, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a battery bench test. A bench test is essentially where we're looking to see if the battery is able to retain a charge or not, or if you have some external factor that's draining the battery, what we call a parasitic drain in the industry. Parasitic drains could come from computer systems, short and a wire, simply a bare wire rubbing against the, the frame of whatever application it's, it's connected to. And it spans across the entire power sport industry as well as the automotive. Any of those applications can have a parasitic drain. And Today, the goal here is to show you how to test for that without having any real specialized test equipment, the ones that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So there will be two things that you primarily need for this, three preferred. First, obviously your battery, you, your testing, you're gonna have to have that at your disposal. Second, a voltage meter. It does not have to be a top of the line voltage meter. It could be something that you get from your local hardware store. And third, if it's required, a battery charger. All right, for this video, you know, we're using a, a NOCO series battery charger. That's just uh, one of the top brands that we sell. Let's dive into it. Why do a bench test? A bench test is something that we tell customers to do when they're experiencing a situation where the battery has worked and then they come back to the application at a later date and then the battery is dead as a doornail. For example, a very popular one for us will be a customer gets a battery, it's a brand new battery, it starts the bike up just fine and then they come back in two weeks after the bike has been sitting in the garage, they try and start it and the battery is dead. It's discharged. Another example would be where all of a sudden the customer will have a bike that has been running from day in, day out, day in, day out, and then without warning, the battery is dead. And they're not quite sure if they had left a key on, left a light on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we could start troubleshooting from here and seeing exactly what's going on, especially if the battery is either new or has some age to it. We'll go over the differences between those two scenarios. First and foremost, remove the battery from the application. Let's take the battery out of the motorcycle, out of the ATV, UTV, whatever have you, and let's go ahead and get it in front of you. The idea is I want to disconnect it from everything. I don't want any possibility of a drain occurring on the battery itself. Second, let's get our voltage meter. The first thing we're going to do is ascertain the status of the battery. I want to know if it's fully charged or discharged. I'm assuming, since you're having a problem, the battery's going to be dead, right? So let's confirm that that's actually the first issue by checking the voltage of the battery. Now, chances are, if you're a do-it-yourself person, uh, and you have a voltage meter, you already know how to use it, but I'm just gonna explain it from the get-go. What we're testing for and what you need to turn your dial to your voltage meter on is called VDC, voltage direct current. And if you have several settings, what we're looking for is VDC 20. Okay, that'll give me two decimal spaces and that's exactly what I need. And that'll, that'll carry us into the 20s, right? So let's go ahead and test the voltage of this battery here. Right now we're at 12.17 volts. Okay, that is discharged for a 12 volt battery. Let's touch on what's charged and what's not charged. For a 12 volt lead acid battery, which is a flooded AGM and gel, 12.7 volts or above is where we want to be. That's fully charged. If you're below that, your battery is discharged. Now, how, how discharged depends on how low on volts, 12.17 volts, you're getting down there. If you're below 12 volts, you're in the dead territory for a lead acid battery, especially for a starting application. Deep cycle, that's a different animal. All right, so first thing we need to do in order to complete our bench test is to bring this battery up to the fully charged level, okay? This is where a battery charger comes in handy. Now, for us, just for simplicity's sake, I've got a ton of chargers that we use here in our warehouse. I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up one of our NOCO series and begin charging the battery. Let's talk about chargers. When you're charging a battery, the charge rate and the type of charger you use is very important. For charging a battery, I want you to use 10% of the battery's capacity as a rule of thumb for your charger. You can round up or round down depending on the number you get. This is an ETX 20L battery. It's a Sportster battery and it's an 18 amp hour battery. So I take 18 times 10%, which is 0.1, right? I get 1.8 amp. That's the max that I want to stay around when I'm throwing amperage into a battery. So I'll use a two amp charger, a 1.5 or a two amp charger. That's kind of the sweet spot for me here. What I'm trying to do is not charge the battery too fast. I want the battery to take some time, absorb that charge that's going in there and really take some time to cook. Uh, so it'll be sitting there overnight, for example, and that's okay. I want the battery to be fully saturated. These batteries are expensive. You know, this is like a $130 battery. So if it takes me 24 hours to troubleshoot it before I have to go out and get another one, I'm gonna do it. 
The charger you use also needs to be acclimated for, or designed for, I should say, the chemistry of your battery. There's a lot of smart chargers out there. Popular brands that we carry here are SeaTech and NOCO, and they are all geared for AGM flooded gel and lithium battery, right? That's, that's where we are in the market. That's the, the products that we curate here at High Tech Battery. Whatever you have at your disposal, make sure that it's gonna be capable of charging an AGM battery, all right? So the review for the charger, I wanna get our charge rate right, stay within that 10%-ish of ov total overall battery capacity, and I wanna make sure that it's a smart charger, that it's going to be capable of charging the chemistry you have. Now, all chargers are typically smart. So in other words, they will turn off when the battery is fully charged. If by, for whatever reason, you still have an old school charger, I know a lot of guys still like them, where they're just on and on forever, make sure you time it. Set a timer on your phone. Whatever you do, make sure you don't cook the battery indefinitely because then the bench test won't make any difference. All right, so that's the charger. So step one in the bench test process, make sure you're dealing with a fully charged battery if you're not fully charged, okay? Step two, we're gonna be testing the voltage of the battery, the resting voltage of the battery, and use that as our benchmark, okay? So a note about pulling your battery off the charger and testing the voltage. You wanna wait 30 minutes after your battery's been fully charged and taken off the charger. That will give you a true resting voltage. Let me show you what I mean. So this is still on. I'm gonna test the voltage here. Where are we at? 12.37. 12.36, you can see it ticking down. And that's because we're not at our true resting voltage yet. The battery is still leaching off the charge that hasn't been absorbed into the plates of the battery. So that's to be expected. That's why you give it 30 minutes when it comes fresh off the charger in order to get the true resting voltage. When that number stops ticking down, that's the true resting voltage of the battery. All right, so I wanna see 12.7 or above at the true resting voltage in order to do the bench test. If you have tried to charge the battery up fully and it never got to that level, 12.7 or above, and you've given it adequate time, then it's time to replace the battery. But assuming this battery did test, let's say 12.8 volts, that's a good voltage we could start our bench test, right? So for the bench test, you're gonna write down that resting voltage and then you're gonna let it sit undisturbed, 24 hours minimum, 48 if you wanna be extra you know certain that it's a you know that your battery's testing good or bad and you're gonna let it sit not touched not disturbed not connected to anything what we're looking to do is see if the battery is holding its charge so if you tested it, it's 12.85 volts you come back after 24 hours it's 12.83 volts that's solid you know a 0 0.01 drop per day no big deal that's where we sh that's where we should be at batteries naturally discharge themselves over time in very small increments very small if you dropped a tenth of a volt overnight your battery's not holding its charge that's it's as simple as that. If you drop the tenth of a volt overnight or something very close to it, then the battery itself needs to be replaced, warranted, etc. All right, so I hope that this kind of shows you exactly how to do a bench test. If you don't have access to a voltage meter, I don't want to say they're a dime a dozen, but they are not super expensive, right? You could procure them at, at an online site or at your local automotive parts store. Uh, even drug marts have them nowadays. So it just depends on what you have and what you don't have. Uh, in terms of battery chargers, if you're not sure of the charger you have, what the formula looks like, remember 10% of the overall capacity is the amperage charger that you'd like to use. Stay a little bit above or a little bit below. You can go below, certainly just know that it'll take longer to charge your battery. There's no problem there. Careful with going above. I don't want you to go too far above that 10% threshold because then you risk charging the battery too fast and it kind of defeats the purpose of the bench test because you won't give your battery enough time to absorb that charge. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. We can be reached toll free at 1-877-775-4381 or www.techbatterysolutions.com. We have a live chat manned by real people and our email address is orders at techbatterysolutions.com. Now, this is an internal training video that we send out to our customers. I'm not sure if our team is sending this out on the worldwide internet. Um, if they are, please give us a call if you are a customer of high tech battery and you have one of our batteries or we've given you this video if not leave a comment in the youtube video section and we can respond to you that way i'm just not looking to flood our customer support line if you're not a customer of ours yet uh if that makes sense so again guys i appreciate your time today thank you so much let us know if you have any questions i appreciate it